The inner city of Winnipeg has long been recognized as an area of urban decline and as such has been targeted by countless initiatives aimed at improving the living conditions for the residents. The Central Park neighborhood is at the heart of the inner city and has developed a strong reputation over the years as an unsafe and undesirable place to visit or live. This reputation, in part, has to do with the lower incomes, high ethnic diversity, high density, and high mobility of the residents of the area. It is also the hub for newcomers to the city of Winnipeg. 70% of all refugees coming to Winnipeg live within the inner city which exists in and around Central Park. This fact, combined with a complex variety of social and economic challenges, makes Central Park a neighborhood in constant flux and need. The current Central Park redevelopment is funded by the Winnipeg Partnership Agreement, Centre Venture Development Corporation, the Winnipeg Foundation and the Gray Family, is aimed at preserving the tradition of the area while revitalizing the social economy. For $5.6 million, upgrades such as a soccer pitch, winter activity space, a new children's splash area and improved lighting are hoped to shift the balance in favor of more positive activities. The inclusion of a designated market area in the redevelopment indicates that food provisioning is a necessary element of the neighborhood and is critical in the future success of the area. Food provisioning has recently become a high priority both locally and across the province as food is increasingly being viewed as a critical link between social, economic and community well-being. The inner city of Winnipeg has long been identified as a food desert where low quality and high cost foods are available and little else. The reality in a capitalist economy is that high quality supermarkets and grocery stores, farmers markets and affordable healthful food options simply do not locate in impoverished neighborhoods. With such a culturally diverse population, opportunities abound for more local, culturally appropriate, healthful and affordable food options. The largest and most unifying local food movement surrounds Central Market for Global Families, a weekly open-air African-style market held on the grounds of Central Park, and is based around the notion that by empowering residents to produce, prepare, market, distribute and consume their own foods in a safe, community-based environment, both personal and community health and security will be improved. Local organizer Othello Wiese explains the place of Central Market within the community. The objective of the market actually is to, in, 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 is to bring new life into Central Park. Because mm -hmm. for the past years ago, Central Park has been out of Winnipeg. Uh, nobody wants to come to Central Park. Nobody wants to stay around here. And this is where when the new immigrants come to stay and refugees come to stay here. And so we thought, why well, if uh, this place is not safe for the long-term Winnipeggers to mm -hmm. come and visit here, then it's not safe for the newcomers. So uh, people are lonely, they feel homesick, nobody wants to come to them. So we had an idea that with the market, people will come here and then... The Central Park has had a reputation in the city of Winnipeg for years as an unsafe, impoverished neighborhood. There are a number of reasons for this public perception. The extremely high density of the area, as opposed to Greater Winnipeg, means that there are many people in high-rise and subsidized apartment blocks, which will naturally lead to higher rates of certain incidences. One-fifth of the population consists of a highly mobile Aboriginal group, and over one-half of newcomers whose first language is not English. The perceptions of high crime are rooted in a high level of drug and alcohol-related charges that often result in violence within public and private spaces. There is also a high percentage of gang violence and activity. Recent young immigrants are known to be highly susceptible to gang participation as their families are often separated during the refugee and or immigration process. A lack of adequate recreation and supervised facilities in the area leaves many individuals and groups to congregate in the public outdoors. This fact, compounded with the poorly designed and lit spaces, also contribute to higher violence and negative perceptions of safety. There's a proven financial need within the neighborhood as well, which is directly linked to the mobility and length of residents of the population. The median income in the neighborhood for persons over 15 is $16,107,
compared to the median of Winnipeg at $26,337. A high percentage of government transfers contribute to income, nearly 29% in the area as opposed to Greater Winnipeg where it's only 11%. 71% of the population is categorized in low income after taxes versus only 19% across the rest of the city. Raymond Ngarbui, a Community Economic Development Coordinator in the inner city and a founding organizer of the market, speaks to the initiative as a method to address some of these perception issues. So the market stopped it and uh, before that Central Park was for many people a very dangerous place to be at any time, even at daytime mm -hmm. and uh, don't talk about uh, the evening or night time. So when the market start, started, people uh, found a place to gather and to interact. Central Market for Global Families is a community economic development project. It is a way for families to work together to improve their economic lives and build social connections while weaving together a resilient new community. Local organizers such as Raymond and Othello believe economic development is key to building a resilient neighborhood and, by all indicators, the strategy is working, as actual along with perceived notions of the Central Park neighborhood are changing. I think many newcomers, many new immigrants arrive here with uh, some knowledge, some valuable knowledge, but they, they, they don't know how to exteriorize it. Mm -hmm. Some of them are uh, very good uh, at painting, handcraft uh, stuff. And so they found the market an ideal place where to show what they know. And some of them are selling what they already uh, made from home. While, and while selling, they are still uh, making the others at the market mm -hmm. and when people when uh, people when the clients or people are uh, walking to the market see them doing that they are excited to support them to, su to support the idea because they know that uh, they are doing it uh, manually mm -hmm. and so it's uh, locally made products and also by doing that these people are learning uh, how to interact with people, how to behave in a public place. And also, it takes away from them uh, the fear that they used to have uh, because of the barrier language. They said they don't have uh, English, they don't have uh, the language, so they can't interact with uh, people uh, outside. And that's why they used to remain inside their uh, place and especially for the single markets. Using food as one perspective to explore immigrant and refugee experiences, it is clear that barriers to social and economic participation are widespread. Central Market for Global Families is one example of an ethno-cultural organization that has been formed to create opportunities for cultural retention, provide a resource service for local residents, build social solidarity, and alleviate social, environmental, and economic challenges facing newcomers. The market utilizes food security concerns to address the larger scale community development and community economic development needs of Central Park. To further clarify food security, a 5 A's definition of food security exists that encompasses the structural elements of a sustainable food system. The challenges surrounding these 5 A's in Central Park and most inner city neighborhoods are Availability and sufficient supply is currently limited by a high number of convenience grocers with high costs and poor quality. Large-scale affordable supermarkets are far from being accessible by foot or bicycle for most residents. $20 taxi rides are not uncommon in the neighborhood for families to make their weekly grocery trip to big box superstores. This limited availability also affects the nutritional adequacy of food as corner grocers carry a meager supply of fresh produce most of which is of questionable origins and quality. The few ethnic grocers that exist in Winnipeg are located mainly in the downtown or north end of the city, still usually out of walking distance. 
There are currently few tools in place to assist residents in taking action towards securing their individual and community food security. There are few public transportation programs, no cooperatively run food stores or buying clubs, no community supported agriculture programs, no public produce available, and few, if any, municipally supported programs to connect the neighborhood with more healthful food options. However, Central Park itself is addressing all five A's. Availability. Central Market, in conjunction with the Immigrant Integration Farming Co-op, IIFC, operates the Rainbow Community Garden. The project is supplying the Central Market with fresh organic produce and providing refugees and immigrants opportunities to participate in economic and social development through farming. Opportunities for individuals to feed their own families while making a difference in the lives of other newcomers by providing culturally familiar, healthy, and affordable food is contributing to community development in Winnipeg's inner city and overall food security and sovereignty in Winnipeg. Accessibility Central Market is within walking distance and often right outside the door of the nearly 5,000 residents in Central Park. Garden plots are increasingly becoming available across the city, with spaces in the North End, the University of Winnipeg, the University of Manitoba Student Community Farm, St. Norbert, and St. Charles Flats. Schoolyard gardens are cropping up at elementary and middle schools across downtown and seek to bring parents and children together in an informal educational space during and after school hours. Adequacy and acceptability. The provisioning of nutritious, culturally and environmentally acceptable foods is no better addressed than growing the foods one is familiar with themselves and providing it at a low cost to one's neighbors. And it's very good because this is what we do back home. Mm -hmm. And come in here and not see anything like that to do, you just feel boring. So we're so happy to have had this kind of place here and to at least make us not a fee. Mm -hmm. That like we now, I mean, that we don't even have the hand or whatsoever to do this kind of work again. Mm -hmm. So this is bringing, bringing our memories back to where we're coming from. So it's very good and I really appreciate that. So I'm going to bring all my kids along with me next week to go ahead. <laughs> How many kids do you have again? I'm having six kids. <laughs> A community run and organized market builds local cohesion and capacity while teaching valuable social and economic development skills. The market allows newcomers to use their knowledge and skills from their native country in this new environment while providing them an opportunity to learn and share from their neighbors and the larger Winnipeg community. Everybody takes his part home and then sells the extra to the market. Right. And our like major that. aim is to supply Central market with the photos. Yeah. Like last year, we had a photo of our, our garden growth to go and, and 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 import some stuff to sell, like tomatoes, pepper. But it, it's like this year, we are going to do it on our own. Mm -hmm. So maybe we may we will only get things like planting or banana from there, but we are not going to get pepper and tomatoes from there anymore because mm -hmm. we're ready now <laughs> to make it on our own. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> The discussion around Central Park naturally leads to possibilities for improving the health of the population who lack everyday accessibility to fresh, culturally appropriate produce, land and resource allocation so inner city dwellers who have little if any land can have the same chance to grow their own foods as homeowners, providing a sense of self-sufficiency to newcomers who may have knowledge and skills undervalued in today's local economy and recognizing the social relationships and entrepreneurial opportunities that could result if city spaces were configured to recognize food provisioning as a high priority. Broad scale and diverse food options help attain civic aims in a bottom-up, often community-led manner. Providing small business financial assistance, reducing crime, strengthening resident connection to place and community, combating obesity and diabetes, and reintroducing agricultural knowledge are a taste of the plentiful contributions food security can bring into a city.